I know. I love them. Good morning, everybody. If you're joining us, please say hi in the chat. We'd like to know who's here this morning. Anna and I are going to get started pretty soon. We were just gabbing about who our favorite podcasters are. Uh, we both listen to them on a re somewhat regular basis. Mm -hmm. I listen while I ride. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I listen while I ride the lawnmower. <laughs> listen while I drive. Yeah, that kind of For thing. That. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, I brought my card deck. I brought this cute little card deck if you're interested. Um, and while we're waiting for people to pull a card for today. So I work with these cards quite a bit. I don't know if you've ever seen me do them before. Um, but they're all, oh, they're so beautiful, right? So the pictures are, um, what is her name? Jan Brett, I believe. I'm going to say it wrong now. Well, anyways, her first name is Jan. But she created all the artwork. And the words on the back are all created by this Melissa Pierce. So I think I'll pull a card if you're interested. Yeah. I use these cards in my groups. I use them for journaling. Um, you know, kind of whenever hits the spot for me, I grab a card. They seem to have the messages that just seem to, that I need each day. So. Yeah, for the moment. So here's the picture. Where's my camera? And the word is hope. The lesson around you is about hope. Hope is the slender cord attaching you to your dreams and desires. That's amazing. We were just talking about yeah, vision. Sure. <laughs> you may be experiencing a trying time or are being faced with adversity. Remember always that hope is not a way out, but rather a way through. Meditate and focus on your desired outcome. Do so repeatedly and let fall away any doubting voices inside yourself or heard from others. Repeat to yourself the desired outcome and envision each small step as a victory toward your highest purpose. Trust that what is taking shape before you is your highest good and the highest good of all others. Move with hope and intention to the eventual outcome. The ultimate situation will be positive. Even the most painful of times can create beautiful gifts in life. Your prayers have already been answered and are in process. Um, so that kind of speaks exactly to like what I was just saying. These cards seem yeah. to just It's kind of weird how that works in life. You know what I mean? Like moment, time. For sure. Very cool. Thank you for, for sharing sure. that with us, Anna. Yes, absolutely. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome to Coffee with a Cowgirl. I'm Brett Kruger. I'm excited this morning to have with me Anna Teets with Beyond the Horse. Anna, I met Anna actually. Um, one of the cool things about my life is I get to meet so many cool people. And I met Anna at our Top Hand Cowgirl Challenge in Nevis. And uh, one of the cool things about our events is that we're surrounded by so many different ladies from different walks of the world, and they all have different paths and journeys in life. And we try to take a lot of time and talk with them about what they're doing or visit. And we encourage that. And so as I was visiting at supper one night, um, I believe it was Dale Grove. Uh, Dale said to me, if you have not yet met Anna Teets, she's across the room. You need to meet her. She does some really neat things with horses and people. Um, very helpful. And so that is how we got, or that's how you came to life in my head, Anna. And then the next day I met your husband who shares a passion, a similar passion that my family does. Um, he used to be into ranch sorting and team penning, uh, was a world champion. Um, so we had a good conversation around that. And then Anna and I connected after the event and I'm like, I really am interested in what you do and what that looks like um, because I snooped on you a little bit on Facebook, I guess. Well, that's how I met Dale. You know, I, I creeped on Dale for a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sounds, it sounds bad when you say creep, but I was, yeah, we're creeping on people to find out more about them. And I had seen that you had done some really neat things with um, military. And I'm like, I really want to talk to you about what you do and how you approach it. Um, I will let you take it from here, Anna. 
yeah, introduce so, yourself to everybody. First off, thank you so much for having me. I am beyond honored to be a yeah. part of this, to be considered for this, and to share this conversation with you about about you know spreading the word about Gestalt and what I do. So, um, Gestalt is what I um, practice. It's probably a word that most of you have never heard of before. I know when I first heard it, I was like, number one, how the heck do you say it? Number two, what does it mean? So in order to tell you about Gestalt and what I do, really the only place to start is the beginning. So in the beginning yeah. is my story, yeah. Before you start with that, can you tell our viewers where you're from and sure. your husband and that kind of thing? Sure, so I'm located in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. Um, we're about an hour to the east of Fargo, North Dakota, if you know where that is. Mm -hmm. um, my husband's name is Guy. And yes, he's very much, um, when I met him, was very much into the sorting and team pinning world. He had this passion with horses for me, with me, and had a ton of fun um, learning all about the cow work. I came from a family that we did some barrel racing, had trail horses and things like that. And so to learn cattle work was like addicting, right? Um, and so leading up to meeting you at the Top Hand Cowgirl Challenge, it just looked so fun. It looked like a way to challenge myself outside of my barrels and comfort zone and and do some different events and you're right on i met the most fabulous people um and we were all there you know with that intention of partnering with our horse to try something new mm -hmm. um, to throw our hat in the ring and, and see where it landed right like we had a ton of fun so kudos for creating that awesome thank event you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you so so the, my story of how I got to be on the horse and creating this thing called equine gestalt coaching or becoming a practitioner, I should say, um, is I was working in traditional employment, right? I was working a regular nine to five. My background is in education. And then I moved into mental health services. Um, and while I was in mental health services, I started um, experiencing what I now know is burnout. I was having trouble um, on Sunday nights, I would have a stomach ache and I would get a headache and I get irritable and crabby. I call my husband, his nickname is the Sugarfoot. Some of you guys know that. Um, but about the only time I would fight with the Sugarfoot would be on Sunday evenings. And what I know now is I was getting ready to go to work for the week, right? I couldn't wait for Wednesdays because we'd be halfway through the week. And I certainly couldn't wait or hardly wait for Fridays. And by Fridays, it seems like all of my goals went out the window because I needed time to decompress. I had too many drinks. I did that kind of thing to get over the stress of work, right? So that was happening in my life. At the same time, working in mental health, I was really struggling with what I have as an opinion, um, but I was really struggling with the structure of mental health, with the system of mental health. It really bothered me that um, mental health was governed by really insurance companies and governed by the idea that we needed to diagnose people with something the matter with them or that something was wrong or broken within them for experiencing life's feelings and emotions and, and being in that human experience, right? So it's kind of bothersome to me. Um, at the same time, I've always had horses my entire life. And like many of you listening, or even you, Breck, I'm sure you've had a girlfriend in your life who didn't have horses growing up and she wanted to learn how to ride, right? So I had somebody in my life from work that wanted to learn how to ride. So she'd come to my home every Wednesday night and we would have intention to ride the horses. Sometimes we'd ride and it'd go as planned. Sometimes she'd walk into the barn with her hair on fire, like worked up. Life seemed to be on top of her shoulders on those days. Work was crazy. There was new policies. It was harder and harder to get her paperwork done. And then at home, she was struggling with, um, you know, regular stuff that we do with our partnerships and our marriages. She had a child who was potty training. If you know anything about that, that can be super stressful, right? I do. Yeah, right. Farther and beyond, she was working on life decisions. Do I go back to school? Do I spend the money? How do I feel about money? Like all this stuff, this life stuff was going on. And it caused her to react some days and be really intense, angry, unsettled, right? So some days she'd come in, like I said, with her hair on fire. 
what I noticed is even on those days that were the tough days, some days we'd ride, some days we'd just hang out with the horses, but every time she'd leave the barn, she left a little shifted. She left a little more present. She left a little more aware. What's that? She was in a better place. She was in a better place, right? She was in a more mm -hmm. touchable place or a place where she was more in touch with what her authenticity was, what she really wanted, right? She was more in touch with the parts of her that could go out and make those tough decisions in life, right? So that was really curious to me. Somebody who had been around horses my entire life, I don't know that I really realized how impactful they were to my emotional health. I would say things like, my horse is my greatest therapist, right? You've probably said that too. Um, and it's true. Horses do not shy away from us when we are having those days where our hair is on fire. In fact, it's almost like they're like Velcro to us, right? So I started getting curious and, and getting in this seeking mode of trying to find a way to combine horses, the most spiritual and present beings on the planet, and mm -hmm. our emotional care, our emotional health, right? I was seeking out every single program that I could find. Um, I went to every equine assisted blah, blah, blah that I could find from here to Arizona. I went to every seminar and they all seemed very good. And yet they all seemed like they were just missing something in the way that I saw horses. I saw horses as more than a, an assistant. I experienced as horses as being incredibly present and incredibly grounded. Um, I saw horses just really as a partnering in this process. So I went out there and did something kind of crazy. I didn't know what I was gonna do, but I was gonna build it from the ground up. And I came home one day um, and said to my husband, hey, I think I need to um, create this program um, around healing and horses and groups of people coming together. Um, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but I'm going to need to build an indoor arena because we live in Minnesota. So I need to have some climate control. <laughs> I'm probably going to have to quit my job to do this. And I, he took this like breath and I'm like, holy shit, what's he going to say? And he went, okay, let's do it. And I was like, are you sure? Are you sure this is right? I started working toward my vision. Um, well, you'd say that's pretty good that uh, Sugarfoot didn't even give you any sort of hesitation. He just went right. with it. Right. <laughs> I kind of was like, are you sure you want to do this? But um, it yeah, it was great to have some good support. So I, through the course of this, I stumbled upon and nothing happens without reason. I didn't really stumble. But I came upon this thing called Equine Gestalt Coaching created by Melissa Pierce. I took one step into her arena and knew immediately, this is exactly what I was looking for, a way to partner with horses and people, a way to get rid of the hierarchy system that I see within healthcare where we have somebody telling you what to do, right? A way to get away from that and a way to experience horses with some of their essential gifts as to why they're on the planet, which is more than or beyond riding, beyond what we've traditionally used horses for and instead it's partnering. So long story short, that's how I got to where I am. Well, um, yesterday, Anna and I, in our run through, our trial run, uh, we just had such an amazing conversation around mental health and what it looks like today and how you get that help. And it, what you're doing is so needed and necessary because our system is broken. Yeah. And, um, Unfortunately, some get help and some don't. And well, I mean, in our opinion, it's like they just want to give us, prescribe us right. something to take right. care of it. And that doesn't always necessarily work. And um, well, I think that it doesn't matter what age or sex you are. I mean, mental health affects everyone and anyone, but women, especially are um we are prone to it because we wear so many different hats and we have a stigma that we are supposed to be perfect and yeah oh that perfect one <gasps> yeah. Right? Ooh, yeah i picked pick present over perfect right i pick that being present 
is the best thing that I can do for myself. And we honestly spend such little time being present. Uh, we spend time in the worry of what is to come. Oh my God. We, oh my God. Right. And we spend the worry time. What has happened. Yes. And, and we spend time over. thinking about what has happened and if we made the right choices. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so yes. we spend a lot of time in those areas. And they are called anxiety, being worried about the future, and being depressed, being stuck in the past. Those are incredibly human emotions. We all have experienced those feelings that come with being anxious and being stuck in the past or being depressed, right? And my big thing in life is breaking down the stigma that, there, that there's something the matter with you if you're experiencing those very hu human emotions. In fact, it's quite opposite of that. Um, it is completely human and normal to have an emotional field, an emotional body, just like our physical body. Our emotional body needs workout sometimes, right? We have <laughs> life that happens with or without our permission. Within our life, we have people that are on the planet, off the planet, that have taught us lessons, lessons that are good for us and lessons that are hurtful to us, right? And all of that shows up in our everyday life. And being present for me is where it starts to be able to break down that need to be perfect. Because that is just some horse, you know what, advice to be perfect, right? Well, I, yeah, I mean, and honestly, that perfection is something that we talk a lot about. I think that every episode of Coffee with a Cowgirl I've had, we've talked about perfection and about how society has, um, put unrealistic expectations out there for us to see. Mm -hmm. And we try, or I think you get to a certain point in your life. You're like, F it. I, mm -hmm. It's exhausting. I can't do it. I don't want to do it because it makes you crazy. And sometimes that, sometimes that, that F it part gets in the way of our joy. We get mm -hmm. so overwhelmed with the things that we're carrying, with the levels and the chapters of our story, we get so overwhelmed that we lose the joy that we used to have. And for us as cowgirls, that's where it starts first. We yeah. don't have time anymore to go spend with our horse. We get frustrated after we leave the barrel pen. Um, a trail ride is no longer enjoyable and it's frustrating, yeah. right? Like that's where we start to see when our, when our emotional health is ignored, we start to lose joy in the things that we used to find so much joy in, right? Yeah. And I, I don't want that, right? I don't want that in my life. And so for me, I take the step toward, toward finding out more and more every day about who I am, what drives me, what I want in this life, right? Um, what my anchors are, who I want to be there. All this stuff is what really coaching is. Um, and by the way, gestalt is a German word, and it translates into wholeness, which speaks so much to what I believe. We are all whole, right? We are all experiencing life exactly as we're meant to. So, oh my gosh, what a great conversation. I know. Well, <laughs> Anna, how are you using the horses to help people figure out who they are and what their truths are? How oh, I love doing? that. So something that is different in this type of coaching that I do, um, it's a very coactive approach, meaning I stand with you shoulder to shoulder, heart to heart. I'm not above you telling you what to do. And I also coactively partner with my horses. In fact, partnering is a really big word for me in what I do. My horses have a lot of choice in how they show up in the coaching arena. Um, the horses do something that is hard to explain. And once you see it, you can't unsee it, right? So my sessions are on the ground for the most part. That means it's non-riding. We partner with the horses shoulder to shoulder, heart to heart, as we go through some of the lightning strike moments of our lives that cause us to react today instead of respond, right? So the horses work in this somatic field or ethereal field and the best way for me to, to to describe it to you without having a horse over my shoulder is to ask you Breck, and i think you're you'll take this challenge to ask you about the last time 
you had a pretty rough day or a rough moment and you were around a horse. Can you remember a time like that? I do. I do. Do you remember, maybe you don't know what he did, but do you remember how your horse showed up? Do you remember anything about that? I do. I mean, um, we, when we were talking yesterday, we were talking about how unknowingly you go to your horse to ride. Well, I shouldn't even say unknowingly because when I'm having a really shitty day and I'm tired of loping circles, I take my horse out in the field and we just, we, we lope through all of the waterways right. and it's just feeling him underneath of me, I guess. Right. So it's that connection, right? Mm -hmm. It's that stopping on the task and being in the moment. We show up differently. Our horses show up differently, right? Um, that is a beautiful example um, of that connection. Uh, the horses are highly aware of our etherical field, so our emotional field. Um, and they respond to what we're holding in the body. So what we're holding in the body, that sounds like way out, right? Mm -hmm. So let me pull that closer to you. I want you to imagine someone or something that you love dearly. Like get the picture of them in your mind's eye. When you have that picture of what they look like or looked like, that person or thing that you love dearly, I want you to feel the love in your body. Where do you feel the emotion of love? I guess in my heart, I don't yeah, like right here, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, right here. Absolutely. Um, this part of our body, it is called the heart and it is where we feel love. Now, for instance, I want you to think of something else. I want you to think of the last time that you were super scared. Um, an example for me is I was driving to Crookston one snowy day, pulling a horse trailer the roads were terrible. And as I was driving, a van was coming towards me and the, the van started spinning out and spinning down the road. And I was so afraid that that van was going to hit me and the horses, mm -hmm. right? So if you can imagine that fear, where do you feel the fear in your body? Fear. I suppose it'd be in my head. Right? Like, well, we can think of it in our head, especially yeah. when I'm like, think of a time, right? Have you ever heard somebody say, I saw that car spinning down the highway and my guts flipped. My stomach flipped. I got sick yeah. to my stomach. Does that make sense to you? Yes, yes. So the emotion of fear we feel in our stomach, right? Every single emotion we have as humans lives somewhere in our body, right? The emotions that feel good and the emotions like fear that don't feel good, they all have a certain place in the body. The horses are very aware of that. So sometimes I will have a horse approach a client in the round pen and they'll pay attention to a certain part of their body. And I partner with horses because when I notice the horses pay attention to a certain part of your body, I'm going to ask you questions about the emotions that are tied to that place. For instance, if a horse continues to touch your throat anywhere on the back of your throat or the front of your throat, I might ask you questions about what truth are you afraid to speak or want to speak, right? And sometimes clients will look at me and they'll go, how did you know that I want to have this conversation with my sister, right? That I'm afraid to have with her. I don't, I don't um, mind read. I don't do anything like that. But I do work you with my horses. The horses. Yeah. Yeah. I partner, so, partner with the horses. Yeah. You don't have to say any names, but because um, you've been doing this for quite a few years now. Mm -hmm. So you have to have one really favorite experience um, with this or moment. Like it was just an aha with uh, a client in a oh, horse. Sure. Well, I've got a hundred stories. I, I mean, what is I, started your favorite writing, one? <laughs> I started writing them down because they're oh. so, they're so amazing. Right. I mean, in fact, my colleagues and I, um, every couple of years write a book and in every chapter is by a different author. Um, and they're all stories like the ones that I'm going to tell you. So one of my most favorite ones, oh my gosh, which one should I tell? They're all so good. Um, early on in my practice, uh, I had a gal here in the barn and she um, showed up and she, she showed up with 
I, I'm not really sure I want to continue in my, my career any longer. Like I bet she's like, I've been a nurse for 17, 20 years. I no longer find joy in it. I hate going to work like that kind of thing. Right. I talked to you like I've experienced burnout. I get what that is. Yeah. She shows up with that. Um, I don't have a lot of joy in work. Now, all, most of the time, what our work is, is really outside of our awareness. So she's showing up with like, I'm unhappy at work. That's what she believes right. is going on with her, right? So I have her in the round pen. Coaching is all about questions and finding your truth. It's not about me telling you, well, go to work and, and do this, right? It's not that. It's totally not that. So she's in the round pen, walking around the inside of the round pen. And I was working with my horse named Cheeks. And he stood at the, at the gate and watched her walk all the way around the round pen several times, talking about whatever she was talking about with questioning, right? And he um, looked at her and never moved off of that spot. And I noticed my client kind of turn and look at him and I could almost like hear her in her head going, what the heck? I came all this way and your horse is just standing at the side of the fence, right? Your horse hates me too. <laughs> right? A lot of that stuff came up, right? And I just let her go because the horses, what they do or what they don't do in the arena always has a meaning. It's not a meaning for me. It's a meaning for the client to find, right? So she's walking around and talking and pretty soon Cheeks makes this huge deal about walking into the middle of the round pen. So he walks into the middle of the round pen and he lays flat down. I mean, head down, flat on his side. And he makes a big deal of being like, he like makes this huge breath, right? And I'm watching her watch him. And I ask her, you know, because again, it's not for me to interpret, it's for her. And she says, and I say to her, you know, just, what Cheeks is doing, does it represent anything? Does it mean anything to you? Does it look familiar? And she's like, no, he's just laying there. And I was like, okay. So she keeps moving and she keeps looking at him. And I asked her again, really feel into what he's doing. Does it feel familiar? Does it mean anything to you? And she looked at him, just kind of hand on her hip, just kind of crabby. And all of a sudden she went, oh my God, you're never going to believe this. And I said, what? She said, he is reminding me so much of my boyfriend. I'm just going to call him Bill, my boyfriend, Bill. And I said, tell me more. She said, well, I've been dating Bill for about 17 years. And I'm considering either we need to move to the next level in our relationship, or I don't know if I want to continue this any longer. And she said, you're never going to believe what I'm going to tell you. And I said, I believe it. You know, the horses know things that they... They just know. I said, tell me. She said, well, recently I've been trying to talk to Bill about our relationship. She said, just the other day he was standing at the kitchen sink doing something. And I started talking to him about our relationship. And he walked into the bedroom, pulled the quilt over top of him and said, I can't talk to you right now. I'm sleeping. <laughs> and she said, he just laid there and did nothing. And I said, really? And it brought into this whole point to her understanding, we did a ton of work about how her relationship with Bill was causing her so much emotional turmoil. And it was spilling out into her work life, right? Like she's not happy at work, but truly it stuff's was. going on at home, right? So it was totally outside of her awareness that she was gonna come and, and work on her relationship with Bill, the sleeper. <laughs> but did. that's what happened. What happened? So that's one of my most favorite stories um, of, of something wild that the horses did that that really is um, something to witness. Right. It's something to witness. It's and it's for my client to interpret and then um, have awareness around. So it's beautiful. The work went into many other things. Um, it's a methodology. So there's there's work that we do around it. Yeah. Um, if anybody has any questions at any time, please feel free to type them in the chat for Anna. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk to you about, Anna, is you do do some work with the military. Can you talk yeah. about that? And I mean, I can only imagine how beneficial that is for them. Um, Absolutely. So, you know, it goes back to my belief that um, we are not broken, that there is nothing the matter with us. That all of us, every single human, whether you're 
a teacher or you're a stay-at-home mom or you're in the military or you've experienced ultimate tragedy of, you know, some big event. We all have stuff. We all have lightning strike moments in our lives that hit us and forever change the way that we show up, right? Good, bad, indifferent. Talk, um, explain, so, explain your lightning strike moments because you did explain that to me yesterday. And just so the people who are listening know what you mean by that. Oh, I'd love to, right? We all have stuff. And the easiest way for me to describe it is to talk about my life, right? Because lucky for me, I'm human, just like the rest of you guys. So, so some lightning strike moments for me. Um, you know, I grew up on a farm, a fifth generation, generational family farm. Uh, my, my dad and mom live on the land that my grandparents lived on, that my great grandparents lived on, that my great greats homesteaded, right? Long tradition. And I grew up in uh, the late 80s, early 90s, when it seems like any, every gener generation this happens. But at that time, the markets were just crashing. Family farms were being closed left and right. I remember my parents um, really fighting about money. Money was tight. Money was scarce. Money was hard to come by. My parents went out in the world to farm and had to find town jobs in order to support the farm, right? Like this is a story that so many of us have. Mm -hmm. They didn't realize how impactful their experience, my experience as a child was, on my adult life. I had some interesting relation, relationship issues with money. How do I spend money? How do I save money? Uh, is money a scarcity? Is money an abundance, right? I had all of this stuff about money and it was impacting my everyday on that topic of money. I think that is so um, common for people. We have parents or step parents or the people that raised us that taught us things that serve us and things that don't serve us. And most of us have been taught something about money. Yeah. Then we have hundreds of lightning strike moments, right? Thousands, millions in our lives. Um, you know, after our conversation yesterday, uh, I was listening to a podcast by Dean Graziosi. And we were in our conversation, we were just talking about, um, well, you, you know, you're like, you know, my parents had never been parents before me. So right. it's a learning curve. they had to learn how to be a parent. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that was something that Dean was talking about in his podcast yesterday was um, there, I mean, millions of things that we do on a daily basis that we've never done before. Right. So you're going to, you're going to fail. You're going right. to not get it right. What separates is the people who continue to try. Right. Because they know, you know, there's so many things that you're not going to get right the first time. It, we're not designed like that, especially right. when you've never done something. Right. So kind no of what. Thing is, no such thing as perfect, right? No. no. Another lightning strike that might hit home for our audience, right? And we got an audience of cowgirls, of people that understand horses. Yeah. Um, man, I don't know how many years ago it was now, but several years ago. It was one of those winters where it was like legit 25 below actual temperature, right? It was one of those nasty, terrible those fun ones. Minnesota, right? And I had an older horse here in my care and a terrible thing happened. He started colicking. It was a hell of a 48 hours trying to save him, doing every single thing we could to keep him on the planet. And at the end of the day, he passed away. Um, this is a story that so many of us have that have horses in our lives, right? After he had passed, I would find myself sometimes cleaning stalls or doing something or cleaning the bathtub. And I'd hear this little voice in the back of my head and the voice would say something like, you know, you should have done this. You should have done that. You should have paid more attention. You should have put a warmer blanket on him. You should have offered him like all the stuff of what I should have done. Does that make sense to you? Right. He's long off the planet. And here I am beating myself up over the care that I gave him. Still Some of the work. Yeah. So there's a lightning strike moment. Right. Um, it has residual after effects that are not serving me to sit and beat myself up over. So some of the work that I've done around coaching has been 
recognizing the parts of me that are saying that and and putting them to rest, right? Putting them where they need to be. Um, that's some of the coaching that I work with. And that's some of the things where I'm saying it's everyday stuff that all of us experience that sometimes we carry in a way that is harmful, that is stressful and hurtful and doesn't serve us. Going back to your military question, which is so important to me, and I want to share that with you. Um, I had somebody approach me after meeting with the horses and doing some work with the horse. She said, I want to bring this work to such a needed population. Um, would you ever be interested in coming to the base and, and doing this with our airmen, airmen and women? And I jumped on that chance. And, and to my knowledge, I'm one of the only people that has brought horses to a to a horse or to an air base to work with with people there. So many of our military come back from station, come back from um, what their job asks them to do or has them do, and they come back carrying the heaviness, the burdens of what they've witnessed or lived through or the separation of their family or the missing of the birth and the death of the people that they love, all this stuff, right? And sometimes our airmen or our military are not finding the help that they need in traditional services, right? They're not finding what they need through talk therapy. And in fact, their bodies hold the score of what they've experienced, right? Their bodies hold that score. This work with the horses is experiential. That means it's more than talking, it's doing. And that really seems to be exactly what is working for some of our airmen, for some of our military. It's what's worked for me in my personal work. Doing seems to be the most efficient way for me to move through my trail of life and, and the things that I've experienced. Well, and um, sometimes it's hard to talk to a human about what is going on in your life. Right on. Can make a connection with something as beautiful as a horse and um, heal yourself through them. I right would, on, right I on. I think it. I think that um, willingness to stand in the presence of our pain is truly the essential gift of a horse. I know if I'm going out to my pasture to catch my horse to put her in the trailer and go to the next stop. And cowgirl challenge, my horse just might abscond from me and run away, right? Right. So I go out to the pasture to simply be, to not put a halter on her, to not take hang her out. Her, to hang out, to enjoy the sunshine, to listen to the birds, to watch the to watch the horses wiggle flies off their back. My horses are like Velcro to me, right? There's something about that. That is what we harness within that gestalt coaching. That ability to be present, to be authentic, to connect to another being and not be doing, 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 doing. So it's beautiful. Um, Anna, we are about out of time here. <laughs> it, you are, it's, like it's, going, it's so good though. It's so good. And yeah. what you're doing um, is needed, it's necessary. And I'm I just know that you're helping so many people. Um Anna also does retreats. Uh, she just told me that she does coaching, uh, phone coaching for female entrepreneurs. So if that is something that you're ever interested in, reach out to Anna and be on the horse. Um, I do have a couple more questions for Anna before we go. So Anna, uh, one question is, what is one unique thing about you that the people watching may or may not know? I think all of us have so many unique things. Um, off the top of my head, because I was thinking of it this morning as I was walking to the barn, some people don't know that uh, my husband and I have been or were hay farmers for about 15 years. So we produced oh, cool. horse hay. Cool. I spent most of my life in the tractor during the summer months. So from okay. beginning of June until September, October, my life was attached to the hay fields, right? And so I've planned my retreats with that in mind. The girls that I know that are coming to this have calving to get done, hay to get take care of, crops to plant and to weed and to harvest, you know, tomatoes to process. We have stuff. 
so my my spring retreat is after calving and before haying, right? My fall retreat is intentional because it's at the time of life where we can go and do for us. So I love it. I love it. What does be the cowgirl you want to be mean to you? I believe it means for me to stand in my truth, to stand in my authenticity, whatever that may be, right? To be me. That feels like a superpower. That feels like something I should put a cape on over. To have the courage and the curiosity to be me and to know that there's only one of me in the world, right? So I think that is absolutely what it means to be the cowgirl that I want to be. I love what you said about courage. Um, I think that's what it means for me too. The courage to be who you want to be. Yep. Very cool. Well, thank you so much, Anna. Um, thank you. For being on with me today. I love what you're doing. Um, I not only love what you're doing, I love the person that you are and helping and um, bringing better life for people. And right. it's so important. It's so important. So Go check out um, Beyond the Horse with Anna. Uh, see what she's doing. Reach out if you have any questions. You know, feel free to reach out to me. I can get you in touch with Anna if you're not sure who she is or how you get a hold of her. Um, I thank you guys so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed our conversation and um, stay cool. It's supposed to be a hot one this weekend, finally. It's going to be really nice in Minnesota. So excited about that. Make sure that you tune in next week on Thursday at 10 o'clock for Coffee with the Cowgirl. Everybody have a great week. Thank you again, Anna. Thank you, Breck. Have a great day, guys.